It's 2024 and people are still slandering FL Studio. They're saying things like it's for kids, it's for amateurs, you can't record in it, and they're all wrong. FL Studio is obviously very dominated by genres like hip hop and techno and EDM and stuff, but I wanna quash the myth that FL Studio can't be used as a amazing professional DAW for literally any genre. Cause I mean, well, you can see it here. I record a lot of instruments all over my wall. The vast majority of what I do is recording instruments and yeah, I use FL Studio. Here on YouTube, I make a lot of videos breaking down my process and like making a song live for you guys. And a lot of you have asked if you can use my FL Studio template. And I'm excited to say that yes, you can. It's available for free on my Gumroad store. You can use pretty much the exact template that I use in all of my projects. All right, anyways, enough faffing around. In this video, I am going to show you how I use this template and I'm gonna record a very brief, very brilliant, incredible, groundbreaking song using my template. That was in fact sarcasm, by the way. So let's get into it. When you download my template on Gumroad, you'll be taken to this Google Drive page where right now there's two templates available. There's the full like instrumental template, and then there's just one with like vocals and a beat. So that's if you're recording vocals over a beat. So this is the main one that's most similar to the template that you see in my videos. You're just going to download that and then you'll get an FLP and FL Studio project file which you can open in FL Studio. Now while that opens it's important to mention that this template uses almost entirely uh, FL Studio stock plugins but I find FL Studio stock plugins are somewhat limited when it comes to good mixing plugins. So on the download page, I've included a list of just five completely free plugins from various developers that I use in the template and that I just really, really recommend for mixing. So the template's open, here's what it looks like. And by the way, if you wanna save this as a template as opposed to just like opening it as a project every time, uh, there is a save as template option in the file uh, menu in FL Studio. So it looks like this, you'll see tracks for recording, you'll see vocals, guitars, drums, bass, and instruments. So you also have the mixer track. Uh, it's all organized for you. You have the master, which I've called Matt Soar, which is a stupid reference that is not even worth explaining. Um, the recording track, the metronome track. So I think, I believe you have to set that on, on your own in FL Studio. There's an audio preview track, right? Browser preview track here in your audio settings and metronome tracks. So set those both to track number two. And then you have all the associated mixer tracks for the vocals, the guitars, drums, everything you've seen on the playlist. I'll get into my grouping system in a minute. But first I just wanna say, of course, like I've refined this template for my own workflow, which will likely be different to yours, even if you're like trying to emulate mine for whatever godforsaken reason. So especially if you've been making music for a while, then you probably have your own workflows and you have your own favorite mixing plugins and even your own favorite instrument plugins. I tried to make this template as versatile as possible, so I literally just included one instance of FL keys so you can like, you know, plunk around on it to find what key you're in and stuff. And aside from some really basic plugin chains, the mixer is quite basic and empty as well. But of course, you can customize this template. So if you find yourself constantly using uh, Citrus or Serum or something as an instrument plugin, put that in there, route it to maybe one of these instrument tracks, the, uh, and that'll help you save some time every single project. Point is, this is a general template that I'm trying to make appeal to as many people as possible. So once you get your hands on it, narrow it down as best you can. So soon I'm gonna show you a little demo of just making a bit of music with this template. But I just quickly wanna go over my routing and grouping and naming because I think this is actually my favorite part of this template. I've refined this a lot over the years and it finally I feel like it makes a bit of sense. So if you didn't know, you can link a playlist track to a mixer track in FL Studio. And I didn't know that for like, I don't know, three years or something. But yeah, you just, when you select a playlist track, you can go track mode and you can assign it to an audio track of your choosing. So you'll notice the vocals are all assigned to mixer tracks. They have this little icon here because you can record directly on, that's what this does. This is because you're always gonna be recording your vocals. You're not probably not gonna use MIDI vocals, I, I don't think. Same with like guitar, at least for me, I'm usually recording guitar as opposed to using some kind of like VST for it. Drums, it can go either way. I use samples a lot from uh, platforms like Splice, which is literally loaded up in the background all the time. But I also often use drum VSTs. And if you're using a VST, if you're doing like, 
if you're making a pattern with, with MIDI, uh, then you're not going to want to route the audio of that track because that's it works differently, right? So like if I want to make a little FL keys pattern, then I'm going to route the actual VST on the channel rack to a mixer track as opposed to on the playlist track. These are just general FL Studio workflow things. These are less uh, specific to my template. But anyways, that's why you'll see on the playlist track, some of the playlist tracks are linked to mixer tracks, some aren't. But you can easily change that. I'll show you what I mean by that in like 30 seconds. Last thing I just want to mention is the way I've named and grouped everything on the mixer track. This is all optimized to make bouncing your audio and specifically making bouncing stems and multi-tracks of your audio as easy and quick as humanly possible. You'll see me do this at the end, but basically what you end up with is a whole jumble of tracks. And so you'll notice everything here is categorized alphabetically. So every vocal is going to start with Vox, and then I'm going to number them most likely as I as the project develops. These will be Vox Harms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So they all end up in alphabetical and numerical order, and I can categorize them. But I'll show you that at the end when I bounce out the stems for this little project that I'm going to do. So real quick, let's make some music. Just to show you how quickly it is to adapt this kind of thing, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to link all of these drum tracks uh, to the mixer tracks. So now these are all linked, uh, and this is what you would do if you want to use like samples, for instance. So so yeah, let's go to my samples on Splice and let's make like a really crappy basic beat that I haven't thought out at all. All right, I'm just going to drag in the first kick that I have saved in here. We'll do a little, uh, how about we do the two and the four? Sure. I told you this song is going to be just genius. I'll quiet these down a fair bit. So if you like doing your drum parts like this with samples in the playlist, which I do most of the time, I would say, this is how easy it is when you just assign the tracks here. And let's say, ooh, I don't really like that snare. So I'm going to go in and just quickly name these snare. Ooh, let, let, let's say I want, I'm trying to be interesting. Let's say I want to like layer up two different snares. So I can do that because I, I, I have individual control of everything because it's all just automatically routed. Snare left, snare right. Pan that a little bit. Snare's coming out the left now. Let's get a second snare sample or some kind of sample. That's a kick. Boom. Snare's in. It's already going to be immediately processed. Got a, little, got a cool little stereo effect going on there. Sure, I like it. Now what do we need? A hat. By the way, I know this is shockingly bad. I'm just trying to show you how to use this. I'm not in a very creative mood right now. Beautiful. First hat that comes up. Let's do it. I was just going to do the eighth notes. Let's see. I want to like get the hat out of the way. Boom. There's an EQ already on it. Yeah, much better. And I like doing that. I ha like having an EQ on almost every track because like, you're probably going to want to shape the tone of the samples that you drag in, right? So there's an EQ waiting for you. Don't even have to load it up. Nice and simple. Okay, I want some reverb. So here's a really cool part of this is if you expand the right side. These are all tracks that are docked to the right side. But I've reserved the last six tracks. But they're all set up with the stock FL Studio reverb with the wet turned all the way up and an EQ doing like an Abbey Road EQ. Um, I really recommend doing this on, on reverbs. And then some stereoization on just the reverb. Stereoization. Stereoization. But let's say we probably want to group all these drums together a bit more. So let's route the drum bus to this. This is going to be the drum reverb. So reverb, drum, boom. OK, that's pretty intense. Let's do a smaller one. Drum room. That'll work, huh? And make sure when you're using a reverb send and you're not putting the reverb directly on the track, just turn the dry all the way down, wet all the way up. Nice, it's like a tight little, tight little reverb in the drums. So now that we have this incredibly innovative, brilliant beat, I think it's time to talk a little bit about the processing on the overall channel. So you, uh, there's, again, there's like an EQ literally everywhere. I'm not really gonna touch this on the drum bus. Uh, this Mjukjur by, by Klanghelm is a compressor. I love this kind of compressor. It's similar to an LA-2A compressor, which is what I use on my projects all the time, but it's super easy to use. So you just drag this compress value until you're getting some peak reduction. The little graphic in the, show, in the center shows you uh, how much peak reduction you're doing. As you go up more and more, you're compressing the dynamics further and you're doing more peak reduction. There's no right way to compress something. Let's say I just want to do like 2 to 3 dB now. That's like kind of moderate compression. And then you can do makeup gain. And they have this brilliant saturation knob plug in here when you just want to add a little flavor, a little crunch on something. All 
All right, we got a little vibe going here. All right, let's add some bass and uh, in the spirit of FL Studio free stuff. Good old flex. Oh man, this brings me back. All right, we're using this 808 squared because it's the first thing I clicked on. So now that we're working with MIDI, we're gonna be using a pattern. So let's call this bass and my bass is always like dark blue. And we'll record notes and automation in. I have no idea what I'm doing. Let's see what happens. It's the most awful thing ever. All right. Should turn that way down. Oh, you know what? I'm <laughs> going all in. We're using FL keys. All right, create a new pattern called FL keys. So we'll go in one of the instrument slots. Man, I don't know what I'm doing. I just did one, five, six, four. All right. Let's label this up. Let's just, just drown it out. We just got two more things to do. I'm gonna take you guys through recording audio and then all of the master effects and stuff. Okay, so recording. This is like a contentious topic probably because what you can always do, right? So I'm, I'm recording guitar now. I can record directly onto one of my guitar tracks. However, especially when you're doing a lot of takes of something, I find that gets messy. And this is the place where people will say that FL Studio is like inferior to other DAWs because it's a bit annoying in terms of where audio takes end up and stuff. But this is just how I like to record. This is how this session is set up. It, it, it works nicely for me. It might not for you, and that's okay. So I use the recording track on the mixer, which isn't linked to a playlist track. So it just goes into the first spare track, which I like to label as these recording tracks. I have a weird stereo mic with this modeling plugin. You could just ignore all that. You would probably just be selecting like mic line one kind of thing for your interface, depending on what interface you have. Let's go. I don't know what I'm doing again. All right. One, two, three, four. All right, uh, let's double track it because obviously we care about the tonal depth and quality in this song a lot. See, so yeah, that's why I just like, don't try to bother with recording directly onto tracks because like I, I you know I messed up there I had to do a few different takes and stuff basically you just have it on the recording track and then you just drag it down to where you want it to be and it takes like two seconds so you got two guitar parts there boom let's pan them left and right record these pretty quiet so let's turn it up there's an EQ and so the guitars are where you're starting to get into the zone of like I've actually done a little bit of processing um, you never, pretty much never want like below 80 hertz. So I've just rolled that off immediately with a high pass filter. I'm also gonna compress these guitars because there's a lot of dynamic range in here. And this is like a loud little, little song already, so. All right, and we want some reverb on the guitar, of course. Let's do a small studio, dry down, wet up. So as particular as I am about coloring things and organizing things, one thing I tend to be a little bit lazy about, I don't really name all my audio tracks. Uh, I just color them so that it just looks pretty on the mixer track. Let's set this up to do some vocals. So exact same thing, I'm gonna record into the recording slot. I like cheese in my nachos. Oh baby, baby. You know you like cheese in your nachos too with your salsa and your guac and your sour cream. All right, whatever the fuck that was. Uh, okay, so learn from me. Uh, I, I was recording pretty hot here. I was peeking, but uh, don't do that. All right, brilliant. So we're going to route this to the vocal lead track, which is where you're going to find the most processing like already there. A little bit of presence, a little bit of air. I like cheese in my nachos. So as you can see on these plugins, I have settings already loaded up. These are like some presets just like from the plugins and stuff. So this is the cut through vocals preset on Warmy EP1A, which is a 2BQ. So yeah, it's just a touch of saturation on there. Let's add some more. I like in my 
this is a really simple de-esser to use. You just turn this knob. So you want to have this cutoff point be where it's not like actually, you can see the reduction that it does on the right side. You don't want it reducing like the majority of your vocal. You just want it reducing the sibilances. Uh, fresh air is just a way to get some extra crispiness and brightness on your vocals. All right, and as always, you can just route that to a little reverb send. <laughs> All right, am I going to record vocal harmonies? Yeah, of course I am. In my nachos. Sure. So as you guys can tell, this track is done. It's ready for mixing. So uh, kind of the last step here is I just like delete all the extra tracks I didn't use. Yeah, this part's a little annoying. I haven't found a good way around this part, but you just have to like reset all these tracks to default. You don't really have to do this. You can leave your project disorganized and stuff. Yeah, I mean, annoying, sure, but it took me a grand total of like 20 seconds or something. All right, and our beautiful project is done and organized. So now for the best part, let's export this right to my downloads because, well, uh, this ain't going anywhere. We're gonna hit split mixer tracks and you'll see what happens. Took like 20 seconds. So this is what it looks like. Basically, you're gonna have the master, the metronome, and the recording track, and you're just gonna get rid of that. You're gonna get rid of the current track that it gives you. And then what you're left with is all of your stems and multi-tracks. So everything that says bus or group is gonna be a stem. So when I'm sending stems off to a mixing engineer, I organize them like this. So I do stems and multi-tracks. So I'm going to take all of my reverbs, those are going to go into the stems folder. All of my buses as well are going to go to stems, group, stems, and then everything else is going to go into the multis. And so if you just ignore the FLP and the backup and audio stuff, these stems and multis uh, folder is exactly what I would send to a mixing engineer. And yeah, if you have more multi-tracks than this, you can obviously like further categorize them into different folders and stuff, which I like to do for my larger projects. Um, for this one, I don't think it's entirely necessary. The only other thing I'll mention that I haven't gone over really quick is the master bus. So I have just really simple settings here so you can do like uh, a quick master. I say that quote unquote, cause like, outsource your mastering, hire a mastering engineer. But uh, if you want to just like up the level of something, this is just a multi-brand compressor, which I like using on a master. I find it's actually a really nice way to shape tone that goes a little bit further than just EQ. Soft clipper, this is how you just make something loud real quick. Just take the fruity soft clipper and do this. Threshold down, post up, and then limiter always on the master, ceiling at zero dB so it doesn't go above zero dB and get weird glitches and stuff. This is just the plugin that I'm using so you guys can hear the audio from my DOS, so don't worry about that one. And yeah, that's all there is to it. I hope this absolutely ridiculous song gave you a sense of how easy it is to record things with this template. Um, and I hope that you guys will use it to record some um, real music. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Once again, the template is available in the description for free for you to download. If you wanna support my channel further where I make recreations of different artist production styles and just take you behind the scenes of how a professional producer works on music, you can join this channel. And for just the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can get access to the stems and full breakdown videos of all of the artist recreations that I do on this channel. That being said, I don't think I'm going to make the stems to this video available. Very, very sorry about that. If that sounds interesting to you, click the join channel below. As always, thank you so much for your support. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.